Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to one of the most spectacular world championship matches of all time so welcome back to the super match between Veselin Topalov and Vishwanathan Anand so this match was so spectacular we have seen so many dirty tactical ideas in this uh, brutal brutal epic battle we have seen really cool opening ideas uh, immortal tactical sequences all of the beautiful elements that we love to see of course in the chess game be prepared this was just really really an epic battle between Veselin Topalov and Vishwanathan Anand and we have covered already one beautiful game uh, from the super event it was the last game in which Anand played an outstanding a brilliant Lasker defense but we have used this game in our preparation of the Lasker defense because I've started this mini series about the Lasker defense now we are starting actually the super final from the game one be prepared this was simply six six brutal chess that was performed here by both of these top legends so here uh, uh, the game one started with uh, with the game in which um, Topalov played with the white pieces and Vichy played with the black pieces and Topalov opened with the move d4 Vichy's response was knight to f6 c4 g6 knight to c3 and after move d5 we have the Greenfield defense so after move c takes d5 we have knight to d5 the exchange variation we have now the move e4 knight takes c3 b takes c3 and for bishop to g7 we have reached now really the most often and most popular played line uh, by both sides now basically what white has here is of course a dominant central control with the pawns black on the other hand has this powerful bishop, uh, dark square diagonal of the uh, bishop and will eventually try to break the position will try to break the pawn chain with ideas of c5 knight to c6 maybe if knight to f3 also bishop to g4 so here basically the whole battle will be around the square d4 so in the continuation topalov plays bishop to c4 we have now the move c5 knight to e2 controlling further the d4 square knight to c6 and now you see this move knight to e2 very was very important because if you would have played knight to f3 then you could face really many positional and tactical problems with the move bishop to g4 now if bishop to g4 happens still you have f3 and you can kick away uh, the bishop and still have a great control of the d4 square so in the continuation bishop to e3 was played by uh, topalov kingside casting kingside casting and now knight to a5 also a common move and these types of lines when the bishop on, is on c4 because many times white is playing bishop to d3 bishop to e2 is in some occasions also a good choice bishop to b5 is also an opportunity but now when the knight uh when the bishop is pardon me on c4 then knight, the knight cannot uh can attack it immediately with knight to a5 and it's of course a great tempo against the bishop but the downside i think a little bit about this move knight to a5 is that actually your knight is on the edge of the board it's simply too far away from the action okay you will eventually fix it and it has some kind of a great control here on the queen side but I don't think that anything is happening on the queen side. Basically, the whole game is coordinated toward the king towards the king side. Look at this. Both bishops are there, and we have to say it. Usually, your knight has to be somewhere here on f6, when where it's at least protecting the h5 square and also the h7 square. So okay, you gain the tempo, but it's really not the optimal square, of course, uh, for the knight. So here b6 was played by Anand, queen to d2, trying to play this kind of an idea, bishop to h6, trying to trade off the bishops, and then maybe hit here the center with move f4, f5, or maybe with move h4, h5, undermining here a little bit defensive in front of the king, because as I said, black has really a lack of defenders the only minor piece that's defending uh the king is of course the bishop on g7 so here vichy hits the pawn uh, to e5 hoping maybe to get a clarification to get this kind of a, a good structure where from move d5 then he could actually break the position with move f5 and then i think he could have a sor sort of a king's indian structure is of course not the same but really like in the king's indian like let's flip the board here uh you, now you can play f4 g5 g4 and similar stuff you would let this pawn roll and you can also play maybe here so this kind of idea knight to b7 knight to d6 this is a common uh, idea when you have this advanced pawn when you have the supported pass pawn whenever you face a supported pass pawn then you want to create a blockade uh, uh, uh in front of this pawn so basically the best square that can create a block it is of course the knight so i think after move d5 here black could have really a solid game i think even black would take over immediately the game so that's why you see this move uh this move um, e5 is forcing now immediately a reaction here by Vesely topalov and many of us would even take d takes e5 and similar stuff but then you opening simply up the, the long diagonal for the dashko bishop and also what you're doing uh, is you're keeping yourself an isolated pawn on c3 so this move e5 was a 
uh, really brilliant by Vichy Anand, but now comes even a more brilliant move here by Veselin Topalov. Veselin plays an immortal, really sharp line uh, with the move bishop to h6 immediately. He sacrifices simply uh, the pawns in the center because after c takes d4, bishop to g7, we have king to g7, of course d takes c3 doesn't make sense now because queen to h6 is going to happen, you lose the game. So after move bishop to g7, king to g7, c takes d4, e takes d4 and look at this now, okay. Black is here a three versus one situation on the queen side, but the bishop is now doing the same thing that we have talked about now previously uh, for black. Uh, white is doing a beautiful blockade with the move bishop to d3 and has now a four versus three pawn majority possibility here on the king side. So this is now our attacking side. We'll let the pawn roll here on the king side and we will create structural weaknesses probably in front of the king. We will simply destroy all of the pawns in front of the king and with this beautiful activity, especially when e5 happens, maybe the light square diagonal gets opened, then it's a really, really... Uh, the really dangerous game here for black we have to say it because okay you have your fun on the queen side maybe you have also here a two versus one situation with the pawn majority also you have a pawn here also you have a knight on a5 but i think uh, black's attack is simply too slow you need five six seven moves in order just to make maybe a simple threat on the queen side on the other hand a white's attack on the king side is much much faster we'll play f4 f5 and we're already there so we have already a great attacking chances so rook from a to c1 was played by uh, topalov not maybe allowing here the queen to get developed here on this square and now comes already a tiny little, I think, inaccurate move here by uh, Vichy. He played queen to d6. And this move seems like a logical move because you're getting the queen out and the queen is active. The queen is centralized, uh, controlling many squares. And now you play probably bishop to d7 and will, you have your beautiful rook connection, which is, of course, a very important stage of the opening. But actually, this move, queen to d6, is doing a very important thing. It creates also attacking chances now for white against the queen because after f4, e5, the queen could be endangered. Of course, you will not trap the queen by your moving your pawns, but I think you get an extra tempo. You play f4, e5, and then you get an extra tempo. The bishop gets liberated, and again, we are on the attacking side. So the queen is a little bit exposed here, although probably, as I said, you will not probably uh, trap it or something, but uh, I don't like now simply here the queen's position on d6. So here the continuation f4 uh, was played by uh, Topalov, so maybe as I said, bishop to d7 would be a slightly better move for, for Vichy, but now after move f4, you see the queen is already endangered and it forced now the move f6 by black. This move f6 is preventing e5. Okay, you have prevented e5, but now you have created new weaknesses in front of the king. You see f6 is in many occasions not so good because if you move the knight maybe somewhere uh, or maybe to b7 maybe uh, to c6 or something then the bishop will come into the game and will slice up here also the long diagonal so okay Vichy is battling here Vichy is trying to defend this position but uh, I think he provoked himself a little bit too much weaknesses uh, with this move queen to d6 now Topalov goes immediately with the move f5 uh, if you go here g5 a immediately then we'll hit the pawn here to h4 and again we will just continue the pressure if you pick up here um uh, the pawn, then we have rook to f4, rook takes h4, knight to f4, knight to f4, knight to h5, maybe even queen to h6 is going to happen, so you're getting destroyed immediately here on the h file on also on this dark square. So, after move f5, queen to e5 was played uh, by um, uh, Vichy Anand, which is of course a great choice, the queen is now a good defensive piece, but you don't want to have of course your queen overloaded to the defense of your king like this, uh, you created this beautiful blockade, but usually you want to create the block it with your knight not with the queen the queen is a too valuable piece just in order to have it on the defensive so now from this point on i think uh, topalov is taking over because he plays now uh, the beautiful move knight to f4 vichy goes now with the move g5 and again this is not so good he created again a new weakness in front of the king again bishop to d7 maybe is the way to go connecting the rooks because you'll see now in the next couple of moves why is it so important to have a rook connection uh here because bishop to d7 is again i think necessary maybe competing on the c file trying to simplify the game by trading off more pieces and similar stuff so in my opinion 
this was necessary but now f move g5 uh, that we should, uh, did here vesting to palo plays knight to h5 immediately look at this you don't have any more the g6 pawn in order to protect your king and now from this point on i think white is taking over from this point on and the game is a one-way ticket because after king to g8 uh, we have now h4 again the same motif we're trying to open the position if you play of course g takes h4 the queen is coming into the game on h6 after rook to f7 rook to f4 rook to g4 is simply winning the game so after move e h4 we have now the move g6 but look at this with every move uh topalov is provoking further weaknesses in front of black team look at this lights were weaknesses the knight is active there is a tension here so i would really not love to play anymore this game from from uh black's perspective so after move h6 g5 h6 g5 now rook to f3 was played by uh, topalov he's trying to get the rook uh here into the game uh, on the h file but actually here already what could have been really a spectacular move already will come to this move also in the later stage of the game but knight to f6 is actually working here this would be really the stunner immediately because after queen to f6 we can immediately include the queen into the game and look at this the knight in one moment has to get back into the game bishop to c4 is going to happen bishop to d5 so there's simply too much pressure so the e5 goal i think is is now very very crucial here bishop to c6 and similar stuff e5 will let these two connected pawns roll and i think black could face many many tactical problems so here topalov didn't play the move knight to f6 immediately he played rook to f3 which is also good i think from for a human eye this line knight to f6 immediately was sort of a stockfish line but for a human eye it's perfectly fine what uh, Topalov is doing. He's playing rook to f3, rook to h3, uh, trying, of course, to include maybe the queen into the attack on the h file. So it's now, again, a good game. And again, Vichy has some chances to do something. He has to, I think, play now again the move bishop to d7, connecting the rooks. As I said, rook connection, rook connection, rook connection. You see how important this rook connection will be now in the continuation of the game because probably, okay, white can continue with rook to g3 and maybe knight to f6 rook to g5 and similar ideas but now after king to f7 and knight to f6 that now maybe happens i'm talking about this move knight to f6 now more because it's a very very important pattern now in the game because if you play now this move knight to f6 after queen to f6 okay you can pick up now the pawn but now with rook to g8 as i said rook connection rook connection we have now a beautiful defensive structure now we can compete against this rook it's a different story now it's not the same okay maybe we are vulnerable with some ideas of e5 but this move e5 has to be prepared more now with the rook connection we can at least compete and maybe we can hang on to this position but after rook to f3 uh vichy played king to f7 he tried to protect now his pawn on f6 in a different way but now comes the stunner finally Topalov plays this immortal tactical shot. Knight to f6, a really brilliant move. Let's see now what happens if you play queen to f6 in the game. King to f6 was played by um, Anand because after queen to f6, as we said, e5 is a huge problem, but also now here the seventh rank is a huge problem. If you get your uh, king back here uh, to uh to g8 then e5 deflecting the uh queen from the defense of the g5 pawn and uh the game is basically over so that's why after queen to f6 rook to h3 you would be maybe forced now to play the move bishop to d7 but look at this uh this uh, rook is coming in a brutal way into the game and even if you play something like i don't know uh here king to e8 again e5 now if the queen takes then we have uh, this attack on the e file so it's again game over here for white so we see the king is naked the knight is too far away from the action all of the pieces by white are playing in beautiful harmony after of knight you have six that um topalov played vichy took with the king king to f6 but now rook to h3 again with the same threat uh rook to h6 in the continuation rook to g8 let's see how bad it is because you don't have your rook connection if the bishop would have been on d7 you could play a great defensive move rook to h8 immediately and you would solve all of your position problems but we have to give credit here i think for topalov because topalov played in possible tactical lines here after king to g8 rook to h6 now the check king to f7 rook to h7 again a new check we have now king to e8 and now rook to c7 getting both of these rooks on the seventh rank from this point on the game is basically over in the continuation king to d8 was played now by uh, by Vichyana, but now a beautiful move bishop to b5 and there is now a huge huge threat uh, the threat is always to deflect the rook from the defense of um 
of the uh, eighth rank and maybe deliver checkmate but so far this is not possible because the queen is also covering the h8 square for instance if black continues with some ideas of rook to b8 then we can play now this one a rook to f7 and for instance if rook to uh, b7 happens then we have this one queen to g5 and after rook to g5 as we said now we have this immortal tactic a queen to uh, rook to f8 queen to uh, e8 and now after rook to e8 this game would lead into this beautiful checkmate so you see you cannot play rook to b8 in order to include new defenders into the game so that's why after move bishop to b5 uh, Vichy tried queen to e4 but it's simply not working because uh, here after rook takes c8 that was now the last move in the game here actually Vichy Anand resigned again a beautiful tactical shot by uh, by um, uh, Veslin Topalov let's see now what happens uh, if you play uh, for instance queen, king to c8 the problem is now queen to c1 uh, you get a check you have to bring i think here um, uh, the knight in between if you don't do that you're getting checkmated on c7 if you play here now bishop to c6 the queen has to step back but now after queen to e3 uh, d takes e3 we will pick up the rook this is decisive material so it's game over you could of course also uh, here after rook to c8 play now uh, rook takes c8 but now this leads into this windmill tactic rook to d7 king to e8 now after rook to d4 the game should be over uh, you lose again too, too much material so it's came over for black for sure so really great game by Veselin Topalov immortal tactics he played especially with this knight to f6 move now in the end rook takes c8 so we, he won his first game he outplayed really the here the world champion Vichy Anand who was of course world champion in 2010 with really wild tactical sequences incredible incredible game in the round one of the world championship match in 2010 so okay I hope that you enjoyed this game I really enjoyed it a lot a really uh, great attack ideas for sure really cool ideas against the Grunfeld defense I think many of us have problems how to play against the Grunfeld here uh, Topalov showed outstanding outstanding play immortal game it was in the round one so okay see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course